It's another glorious day. What's up? And welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Now, while I was at CES, I got my hands on the X16. Now, when I was in the NVIDIA booth, I was able to pick up and hold the laptop while Cyberpunk 2077 was running. And wowza, the middle of the bottom of the chassis was very, very hot, pretty much too hot to hold for more than about five to 10 seconds. But my hands on with the keyboard, the mouse, the feel of the laptop was that it was a very premium, very well built device. So on the inside, the X16 comes with a dual fan vapor chamber cooling system for the RTX 4080 and 4090. And it goes up to 175 watts with those top two GPU units. And on the RTX 4050, 4060, 4070, it's gonna be 140 watt maximum TDP. And it's going to use heat pipes instead of a vapor chamber. Now, all configurations are gonna come with Element 31 liquid metal on both the CPU and GPU which will hopefully help keep this thin beast cool enough to run these really high wattages because this thing's only 0.73 inches thick. That is insanely thin. I think it's the thinnest full TDP RTX 4090 that you can get. Now there's obviously a lot of reasons to be hyped about the X16, but be sure to watch until the end if you wanna hear all five reasons on why you might not want to buy the X16 as well. So taking a deep dive in the specs for the X16, it's gonna start at 2149 for the basic RTX 4060 and i7 configuration. Depending on which CPU you get, you're also gonna either get 16 gigs of soldered RAM DDR5 5200 with the base level i7 or 5600 with the upper level i7. So if you want 32 gigs of RAM and you want the fastest RAM, you're gonna to need to be sure to get an i9 CPU, which is gonna cost, I'm sure, a pretty penny extra. Now the X16 can be configured with three different screen options. You've got a 240 Hertz QHD plus 16 by 10 with 100% DCI-P3 color gamut. This is clearly the best display out of the three, unless maybe you're an esports player. Now, Alienware hasn't said exactly how bright the screens are gonna get, but they're claiming 300 plus nits brightness. Now you can go with a cheaper QHD 165 Hertz that's only a 100% sRGB, so not as colorful. I'm sure you'll be able to save a few bucks that way. Or you can go with a full HD 480 Hertz 300 nit, 100% DCI-P3 color gamut display, which you may want to do that if you're like a Valorant or CSGO player. Those kinds of games might actually benefit from a 480 hertz display, but for the vast majority of gamers out there, you're probably gonna wanna go for a QHD plus display instead. Now you get two M.2 2280 SSDs, two Thunderbolt 4s, two USB-A 3.2s, an HDMI 2.1, a mini display port, a micro SD card reader, and of course, a headset port. Now you got Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, a GAN power adapter, so it's thinner and lighter, more portable. You get a full HD webcam with Windows Hello. The X16 is gonna weigh six pounds, not including the power adapter, and it is 14.36 inches wide by 11.4 inches deep and 0.73 inches thick. Now the laptop features a Cherry MX mechanical keyboard with 1.8 millimeters of travel and per key RGB lighting, which I did get to try out this keyboard and it felt quite good and it was a bit noisy. Two scrub Zephyrus, a G14. Uh, you guys are big in the laptop space. This guy's been out for, for a while, this one back there. I think it's really impressive that Alienware has been able to include a mechanical keyboard on a laptop that is 0.73 inches thin. That's just crazy to me. Or you can save some money and get a 1.2 millimeter travel keyboard with a single RGB zone of lighting. One big upgrade for the X16 this year is that we're getting six speakers and some of them are upward firing on each side of the keyboard and some are downward firing. So hopefully there's good spatial sound to them. Fingers crossed, hopefully these speakers sound amazing. Arguably one of the biggest upgrades for this year is that Alienware Command Center is being revamped. I have owned several Alienware laptops in the past and every time the Alienware Command Center software has been just terrible. You can't change the lighting for some reason. Updates don't go through and then updates when they do go through oftentimes would break the software. So I have a very sour taste in my mouth when I just talk about it. Hopefully Alienware gets the Command Center right this time. The overall package of the Alienware X6 16 seems like it's going to be excellent this year. 
but there are definitely some drawbacks I can see already, especially when compared to the competition. First of all, there's no mini LED 1000 plus nit display. That's especially a bummer when Alienware is touting that this is the most premium gaming laptop, maybe not so much. Second, I can't help but wish Alienware just committed a bit more to either making this a thin and light system or making the laptop a bit thicker and less spread out. Now, if it was thicker, I think Alienware would probably have been able to make the cooling system even better and hopefully also insulated the exterior so it remains cooler to the touch. It also feels weird that Alienware focused so much on making this device so thin, but not lightweight. Just because a device is incredibly thin doesn't actually make it more portable. Like if it's heavy or if it's too big to fit in your backpack, it's still not portable. It just feels like the Alienware team might have their priorities mixed a little bit here. Like they want really high performance and really thin and it just, it's hard to make it really work. The third reason why some people might want to skip the X16 all the ports are located on the rear of the device, which can be pretty annoying if you gotta plug in and unplug a lot of things all the time from the laptop. Now, I think it's very elegant having all the ports on the back if you're primarily gonna be keeping it plugged in, say like on a desk. Now, the fourth reason is I'm just concerned the X16 is so thin and it just won't be able to properly cool the 175 watt GPU and have a high TDP on the CPU, especially at the same time. Alienware may just surprise us and deliver Deliver great performance in such a thin machine. Fifth and lastly, I think another reason why some people might want to skip this laptop is that the RGB touchpad is maybe a little bit too small. I feel like it should be about an inch taller vertically to have a better touchpad experience. Now, don't get me wrong, the X16 is clearly one of the most beautiful laptops this year. If power, beauty and thinness is what you're after in a gaming laptop, the Alienware X16 should be one of your top picks to consider buying this year. Actually getting my hands on the X16 left me with the feeling that the design team may have focused a little too much on making it thinner rather than making it the most functional laptop possible while still being somewhat portable. Now, maybe if I spent more time with the X16, I changed my mind. And I'm gonna to try to review as many laptops this year as I can. So be sure to subscribe if you don't wanna miss out on all of that content. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Brandon, out.